What's up everyone and welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next question still dealing with the chain rule. So we got to use the chain rule to find the derivative of this function here. Notice this is a weird looking function as lots of functions in chain rule are. They're going to be different composite functions. So we have one over, we have a large square bracket and then within that we have two functions, a difference of functions. So we have 5x minus 3 in brackets to the power of 4 minus x and then all of that is to the power of 2. That large square bracket is to the power of 2. So we got to find the derivative of that right there. So different ways you can go about this. You can notice that this is um, a quotient of functions even though this is just a constant up here. So you can maybe use the quotient rule. I personally wouldn't do that. Whenever I have a, just a constant up here, what I like to do is I like to bring whatever's down here in the denominator up to the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite. Um, you know what, let's actually rewrite it over here. So I'm just going to take this bring it up and so that exponent would turn negative. So this function and this function, they're actually the same thing, right? And then from here, I would do the chain rule. So when you're doing the chain rule, as we've shown in previous videos, what you wanna do is deal with the outer function First, so notice we got this function to the power of negative 2. So something to the power of negative 2, we would bring down the negative 2. That inner function would stay the same. And then what? We would subtract 1 from the exponent. Negative 2 minus 1 gives us minus 3. But then what we have to do is we have to then multiply this by the derivative of that inner function. So the derivative of that inner function is going to go in these square brackets here. And then I'm going to work with that derivative on the side here. So notice that, let's call it g of x. So we got g of x equals 5x minus 3 to the power of 4 minus x. So notice it's a difference of function. So we could actually just take the derivative of both of these separately. Right? They're not multiplying. If they were, we'd have to use the product rule, but it's just a difference of functions. And whenever you have a difference or an addition of functions, you could just work with each one separately. So taking the derivative of this, we would bring the 4 down. We would subtract 1 from the exponent, keeping this inner function the same. And then we've got to multiply it by the derivative of that inner function. The derivative of 5x minus 3 would give us 5. And then we would subtract the derivative of x, which is just 1. And so simplifying this here, notice 4 times 5 gives us 20. And we got 5x minus 3 to the power of 3. And then we have minus 1. So this would go over here, right? That's this here. It's the derivative of that inner function, this function right here. So writing that over here, we'd have 20 bracket 5x minus 3 to the power of 3 minus 1, like that. And then what we can do, let's make this look a little nicer. Now let's bring, notice we have a negative exponent, so let's bring this down to the denominator. So we could rewrite this as negative 2, this would stay in the numerator, and then we're multiplying by this, so that stays in the numerator as well, so we'd have 20 5x minus 3 to the power of 3 minus 1, like that. You could also take this negative 2, maybe distribute it, so you'd have negative 40 and then plus 2. But I'm just going to keep it factored on the outside. And then that's going to be all over this brought to the denominator. And then we're going to change that exponent to a positive. So we would end up with 5x uh, minus 3 to the power of 4 minus x. And then that's going to be to the power of positive 3. And then from here, I don't feel like there is any way to simplify this. You can maybe potentially expand this, expand that, but those are fairly large exponents you'd be working with. So that would be a lot of expansion to do. I feel like if they asked you for the derivative of a function like this, 
this is the type of solution your teacher or textbook would expect.